Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. In this video we're going to be creating our interactable base class and as always we're going to jump straight into this by going to our C++ classes folder. We can right click, create a new class and what we want this time is a basic actor. So we're going to create an actor class, we're going to make sure that we put this into our interact folder that we already have. Just make sure that we've named that the same of course, the other option is to just create the class inside of that folder. Uh, we're going to make sure that we put this in the public private separator and I'm going to call this one the interactable base. Okay with that done we can hit the create class and we'll let that compile itself. So this is going to be our base class in case we ever want to expand on this and create different types of interactable objects. Uh, again we're going to use a mix of inheritance this way uh, and also the interface class that we used previously so that we can have the same function potentially doing multiple things depending on which class is implementing them. So with the classes compiled we're going to first of all go to the header class. If you have watched the previous video on creating interfaces we're going to do the same thing here that we did in the, the character class as a demonstration. So we first of all want to include the interact interface. Okay so this is going to let us get the information about the, the, uh, the interface in this class. Now to actually show that we're implementing it, remember we want to add a comma just here. I'm going to say public I interact interface. And by doing this now we are going to be able to implement the functions which exist inside of the interact interface class. So if you don't already have it open, open up the interact interface.h and we're just going to take the functions that we declared last time. If you don't already have these, just type them back out uh, with the u functions because we want these to be exposed in Blueprint as well. Uh, and once you have those, copy these into the interact base class at the bottom of the public section and we can just tidy this up. Okay, so because we have these as Blueprint native events and callable, we want to make sure that we have our implementation of these. So for this, uh, quite simply, we're going to do, as we've done previously, we're going to create a virtual void, and this one will be on interact underscore implementation. Again, we want to pass in the same parameters, so an actor class called caller, and we'll close that off. And we're going to do the same again for the start focus and the end focus, same naming convention, for the implementations. Okay, so we now have the implementations for the blueprint part of this. So we can move on over to the C++ or the code file. Rather than typing these out by hand, I'm just going to use my shortcut. So make sure that we're getting the implementation version of this. We'll press control and period when we have this highlighted and we'll create the definition. Now again, if, you, if you're using something which doesn't support this, same thing as always. We're getting the name of the class, which is a interactable base, the name of the function, which is the implementation version, and any parameters you might need to pass in, and then opening and closing the brackets. We just need to do this twice more, once for each of the other functions, and then we are wrapped up pretty much here. Okay, so make sure that we're saving this. We're going to go into the code file now, and I'm only going to add one of these in the actual code file, just because the reason that we've exposed things like this is some things are just a lot faster in Blueprint like I've mentioned uh, and the things that want to happen on focus are kind of a good example of this where I want to change the color of the material of the object we're looking at. That can be quite cumbersome to do in C++, very very simple to do in Blueprint. The one thing I will show you how to do though is on the implementation, so say that we've, we've used this, uh, we could add an interact function in here and then destroy it, but I just want to give the visual representation. Uh, so what we're going to do is when the character looks at an object and interacts with it, we're going to call destroy. So that's just going to remove the object from the level. Uh, I do want to show that something is happening though. So I'm going to do some print strings to the screen and show you how to do that in, in C++. So for this we need the G engine. We want to call the add on screen debug message and we can pass in some values. So I'm going to go with uh, for these minus one 15.0 F. Uh, these are just the text values. We're going to next need the color which is an F color. For the color I'm just going to make the first one uh, we'll say orange and the text that we want the screen to present which I'm just going to say start focus. We can close that off and we will just copy this. We can paste this into the end focus implementation, change this to say end focus and change the color to green. 
So nice and simple. Whenever we uh, have these, we'll be able to see that the C++ implementation is doing something, but we can also see what the blueprint function will be doing. And this will be a nice way that we can see how to use interfaces in C++ and blueprints. What I need to do again, I've got this uh, compiled and building through Visual Studios. So for me to run this compilation, I need to go and hit compile inside of the engine. You can of course use Visual Studios and use the shortcut for that if you wanted. So again, that has compiled successfully so what I want to do, if we go back in to our interact class, I want to find the interactable base and create a blueprint class based on this class. Put that into the blueprints folder. I'm going to call this one the BP underscore interactable. Nice and simple. So once again, just kind of seeing how this is going to work, we're going to go into the interactable class we now have. I'll add a visual representation for this, which will just be a simple cube. And we're going to need to do a few things to our cube. So the first thing is we're going to want to give this a material instance so that we have a vector parameter to override a bit later. So make sure that we give this the mi underscore flat white or some other instance that you've made. And then the other thing is, in fact, rather than using the standard cube, we can use the sm cube that we've already imported. Uh, this is just a static mesh. And I'll use this just so that we can go and find this quickly and make sure that this has a collision because I believe by standard this won't, which means the line traces we're gonna be trying to use to interact with this just won't find anything and it won't work. So we can see there's no visual representation here of a collider because it doesn't have one. So we're gonna go up to collision. We're going to add a box simplified collision. I mean, I have a collider for this, which just means, like I said, that although we have this set to block all, it wouldn't have had any actual collider on it to do the blocking. So we wouldn't have been able to have traced and found it. So make sure that you save the static mesh details. We're gonna go back in, we're gonna change this to actually overlap all uh, because the main thing is that we're getting these visibility and camera traces. Um, in fact, how do I want this to work? Okay, so we don't want the character to hit this. We probably want the character to be able to walk through the interactable maybe walk on it depending on the type of game that you're looking for but I'm going to go with custom in fact so I'm going to make this ignore everything uh, and for traces to work we do want the traces to block though so I think we've got the line trace coming from visibility but just to be safe we'll make sure that we're blocking camera traces uh, and that means that nothing but the line traces from the character class will be hitting this so that we can walk through it it's not going to get in the way and we can still move around the level so it's not going to be like a blocking volume Okay, so like I said, sometimes apologies for the uh, doing this on the fly. I'm just kind of thinking of the scenarios that we might want to account for as I go through. So the final, final thing that we're going to do today, and this won't unfortunately leave us with anything working, there's still quite an amount of C++ code to do in the character class before we can actually interact with these, but I'm just going to add the end results into our interactable blueprint. So we can get rid of the event tick and the overlap. Off of the begin play, I want to create a dynamic material instance. It should know we can only do this for the cube, so we'll get that as an option here. There's only one index on the cube for the material, so we'll leave the index as zero. We're gonna promote this to a variable. We're gonna call this one the material instance. I'm going to get the vector parameter value. So this is the color that it is at the beginning of play, and I think I've called this color. Just double check this by going to the cube, going to the material, and we can see that we have an override parameter here of color, which is what we're going to be working with. So I'm going to get the color it begins, and I'm going to promote this to a variable as well. And I'll call this one default color. Okay, so this is just storing some information. Now, what we can do is we can account for what's going to happen when we finally get to the implementation of the interface. So we've got our start focus. Another way that you can access these, by the way, I haven't shown is we've always right clicked and found here, but we can go to function. Uh, we can override a function that's been implemented and we can see we've got our start focus on interact and end focus all coming from our inherited interface like we'd expect to see over here. I'm going to go and get the start focus and the end focus. So when these are called, what I want to do um, is get our material instance and I'm going to set the vector parameter value. So when it starts focus, I'm going to change this to kind of a light red when we look at this or a pale orange. And I'm gonna promote this once again to a variable. If you're not familiar with this, the reason I've done it that way is that now we've promoted that to a variable, it will remember the value. So we've already got that orange in there. I'll call this one the focused color. If we hit compile, just show you what I mean there, we can see that uh, default's gonna be black, but when this is uh, called on event begin play, that's gonna be overridden to be white. Uh, and this one starts as the pinky orangey color. 
because I'd already filled it in there. And that's going to be called every time we start focusing on this class. And then likewise, we're going to do the same thing again. So I'm just going to pull this down. Uh, make sure we fill the parameter name in, which is color. Just copy that down here. And then we'll just change the parameter we're passing in, which is the uh, the default color this time when we end focus. So it will return to being a white color. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So remember that the on interact is accounted for in C++. That's just going to be destroyed when the uh, interactable object is interacted with. Uh, but whenever the start focus and end focus are called, we're going to change the color in Blueprint. Now this is missing one step and I've done that purposefully. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we can call and ignore the C++ implementation of the debug screen. Uh, but I just want to show without to begin with and then kind of highlight for people who aren't aware of how to do it so it makes a bit more sense. So like I said, apologies that this, uh, again, with C++ it just takes a long time to create anything and rather than having one very long video double the length of this i like to try and split them down into more manageable videos also makes it more more manageable for me editing them because things just get very laggy otherwise one thing we can do is we can go to the blueprints class though and we can drag our interactable class in so that will be ready we can just come in and play when we've got the logic next time so i'm going to leave that here for today as always if you enjoy these videos or find them useful please do leave a like and share the video around it's always appreciated really helps and thank you for watching. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.